the second guitar part for Snowfall by Sad Fantasy. This is an optional lesson that goes with Lesson 17 of the GCH Guitar Academy Fingerstyle Guitar Course. And this is the nylon strung guitar part. And we'll cover the electric guitar part in a separate course when we're looking at lead guitar work. If you're not familiar with the GCH Guitar Academy Fingerstyle Course, you can find it at www.ebooksforguitar.com and you'll also find it here if you go to my YouTube channel and click on the playlists and it's completely free. Here's the second part of Snowfall being played with all the instruments so you can see the part you're learning being played. As you can hear, with this guitar part, you're playing very few notes, but they're interwoven with the electric guitar part, so it's played over a larger period during the song. And because of this, you'll either have to get to know the song really well, so you know when the guitar's coming in, or you'll have to get used to counting the beats, so you know when the guitar's coming in. Whichever way you do it, it's a good learning exercise. In the ebook, I've also put the music for this part, and that's because it's by far the easiest way to follow the rhythm. So if you can already read music, or if you've been following my course on how to read music, then you could use this to help you find the rhythm more easily. Right, let's take a look through the tablature, and I'll draw your attention to some important points first. And the first one is the fact that I've put counts over most of the tablature, except the rest bars in the middle. And this is to help you keep time. The second thing you might notice is that there's a new symbol here that we've not done in the fingerstyle guitar course. And I'll show you how to do that when we get to it. The final thing I need to draw your attention to is the fact that the whole thing is being played in a pinching style with the primary and index fingers. And even if you'd rather play this with the plectrum, stick with the pinching style if you can, because it gives this whole guitar part a unique sound. To help you learn and memorise this guitar part, I'll just point out the fact that this guitar part only consists of two shapes on the guitar. And for the sake of this tutorial, I call these a small gap and a big gap. With the small gap, you place your first finger on the top E string, with the second finger one fret above it on the B string. Whereas with the big gap, you place your first finger on the top E string again, as you did before. But this time, you place the third finger two frets above that on the B string again. So you can see why I call them the small gap and the big gap. To make it more easy to follow, I'm going to break the tune down into two halves. 
However, they are more or less a repeat of one another, but with the second half, you have an 8 bar rest in the middle of the tune. Right, let's start with the first line and the first three notes. And they look deceptively easy. However, because the first note starts on the fifth beat of the bar, it's quite difficult to count in. Therefore, just these first three notes, I'll play them now twice with a two bar introduction. And it's important to remember that this tune is in 6 8 time, so there's six beats per bar. So here's the first three notes being played with a two bar introduction at 100 beats per minute. And here that is the second time. Here that is again. If you think you're ready, try and play along with it. And one last time. You'll notice that even though this tune was originally played on an nylon strung guitar, I'm using a steel strung guitar. And that's because my steel strung guitar has got fret markings on. And this will make it easier for you to see what frets I'm playing in. Right, let's take a look at the rest of the first line. And here it is being played with the backing. And the first thing on that line we need to look at is the slide. And a slide is where you go between one note and another note whilst keeping some pressure on the strings so that you can hear it moving between the two notes. To start with, let's try that on one string. So here's the slide between the 5th fret and the 7th fret on the top E string. Try that yourself a couple of times, but you don't really need a metronome, just try getting the technique. Now the next thing we need to do is add the second finger on the 6th fret of the B string sliding to the 8th fret of the B string. So it sounds like this. Normally I wouldn't be showing this to absolute beginners until they practiced sliding with one finger first. So if you have trouble with this, don't worry, it may be a little bit advanced. But with a bit of practice, you'll still be able to get it. So just try sliding the 5th and the 6th fret to the 7th and the 8th fret a few times. And here that is again. And here's the complete first line again, so you can hear it in context. And here that is again. If we take another look at the tablature for the whole tune, you'll notice we do these slides six times. And in this particular tune, for every one, we're sliding up the guitar. However, for other tunes, you can also slide down the guitar. If you think you need more tutorials on sliding, just leave a message down below in the comments and I'll bring that one forward because I will be making one eventually, but I'm not in any hurry to make it until I finish the fingerstyle course. Let's take a closer look at the second line 
But first, let's hear the first and the second line being played through. Here's the first two lines again. Once you've mastered the first line, the second line should be easy because it's got exactly the same rhythm, but the slide is a little bit later on. Here's the second line being played on its own with a two bar introduction at 100 beats per minute. Personally, I think this tune is harder to learn with the metronome than with the actual backing, because the backing acts as a good reference. But let's hear that second line once more anyway with a two bar introduction and the metronome. Let's hear the first two lines with the backing track at full speed, but with a two bar introduction. So try and play along with it if you think you can. And here that is again, one last time. Right, let's take another look at the tab for the first half of this tune. And you'll notice that the first line and the third line are identical. And the only difference between the second line and the fourth line is the last note. So once you've learnt the first two lines, you should know the entire tune. It's just a case of mastering the timings. Here's all four lines of the first half being played with the backing track. And here that is again with the usual two bar introduction. Try and play along with it if you can. But if you can't play it yet, don't worry. It's a case of practice and then you can return to the video when you're fairly confident with it and then you can try and play along with me. And here that is again, one last time. Normally, I'd tell you to practice the first part of the tune before even looking at the second part of the tune. However, in this particular case, the first part of the tune is more or less identical to the second part of the tune. The only difference is there's an eight bar rest between the first two lines 
and the second two lines. In the eight bar rests, there's an electric guitar part going on, and this can help you to cue where you're supposed to come back in again. Here it is being played with all the guitar parts. Try and follow along with the tab, and hopefully this will help you to learn when you're supposed to come back in. If you're trying to follow the tap or the music and you're losing count of the rest bars, a handy tip is to put the number of the bar at the beginning of the bar. So in other words, rather than counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, what you'd count is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on. And then once you've got up to say bar 8, you know you're at bar 8. Another tip, if you're trying to play the guitar and you want it to sound exactly the same as it was played in the original, even if you're using a steel strung guitar, what I'd suggest is, if you have it, use a little bit of reverb. And that has the effect of moving the guitar to the back of the mix and it sounds more natural. Here it is again, one last time, with all the guitar parts, and hopefully this will help you come in at the right places. If you'd like to see the tablature for this particular lesson, go to www.ebooksforguitar.com and then click on the lessons and look for the fingerstyle guitar course. At the end of this video, you'll find the backing tracks for what you've learnt today, and I'll put those twice. I'll also put the backing tracks for the entire song, and they'll include 
all the guitar parts, but the part you're playing. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this lesson, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, and that way you'll be notified when I upload new videos. It also helps the videos get noticed by the algorithms, and therefore they appear in more searches, and obviously that's a great way to support the channel. Thanks again for watching.